Welcome. Bienvenidos. Bonjour. Bukhim habayim. Welcome. And thank you for boarding our flight this evening. We appreciate your attention for the next few moments while we take you on a journey around the world of NGPA. Please silence your phones. And whenever the seatbelt sign is on, be sure to securely fasten. If you need to get up to use the lavatory, please exit by one of the doors in the rear of the room. And don't forget, on the way back, grab your favorite beverage from one of our bars located in the foyer. Seatbelts were probably invented before you were born, but in case you've forgotten how to use them, insert the metal end into the buckle. To tighten, pull on the loose end. To release, lift the buckle. You may be required to stand and assist us tonight if you want an auction item, a scholarship, or Queen of the Fleet. If you are unable to help us with this, please let one of us know. In the event of a water landing, be sure to sign your contract with Tom Hanks, located underneath your seat. And in case you need a friend, bring a volleyball with you, just in case. Surely, smoking is not allowed. And if you tamper with the smoke detector, you will be thrown out. Don't call me Shirley. We'll be taking off momentarily on our journey around the world of NGPA. So buckle up and enjoy the flight. Hello everyone, I'm David Pettit, and your pilot in command for today's discussion. And here with me today is my crew. Dean. Hey girl. Troy. Hi. And Jan. Hi everyone. This evening you're gonna be hearing stories from our members and our chapter leaders across the world of NGPA about the experience and growth of our organization this past year. Thank you all for joining me. It's great to be here. And thank you, David, for having us in warm, sunny, tropical Columbus, Ohio. I mean, I flew all the way from Canada, and I'm ready to move in. What are you, a lesbian with a U-Haul? <laughs> <laughs> well, we really got to thank our local chapter here, and uh, the chapter at the university are the ones who provided the connection for this space. Connections. That's where I want to start with our discussion. This organization was founded on connections and relationships with people that shared similar interests and struggles. That was almost 30 years ago. We were in diapers, but Jan, you were there. Yes, David. Many of you may not know this, but when I first joined the NGPA, although my hairstyle was the same, the airline industry was a much different landscape. We had to hide our identities for fear of being outed. And to think today we host a very successful, massive industry expo, well, that's just a dream come true. It truly is an amazing event and has grown exponentially over the past few years but we've also attended a lot of events this past year. I mean, collectively, we've attended more Pride events than ever before this year. Wow, didn't you go to London Pride this summer, Dean? I did. Did you have I tea with it. the queen while you were there? I mean, not the queen, but there was tea and there was some queens. I'm just really excited though, guys. Our NGPA <laughs> international family is finally expanding and growing. It's absolutely amazing. It really is. I had my own international experience this summer uh, at eBase in Geneva, Switzerland. We were a small fish in a big pond, but uh, our members sure did come out and find us. So incredible to see all the relationships that we're building overseas and, and the great people that are joining our organization. Well, not only those two international events, but our famous flagship events, the Winter Warm Up and the Cape Cod Classic. Did you see the winner of the Queen of the Fleet? It was that beautiful float plane flown in by Keith, one of our Yankee flyers. Yeah. We've actually got some footage of that. Let's take a look. Oh my gosh, that was a lot of fun. I remember being out on the ramp. I remember the Frenchie in the airplane trying to steal votes with the champagne. Well, careful there. I don't think people were stealing votes. We have more integrity than that. People certainly are getting creative, though, with how to win this queen and princess of the fleet. But rightfully so, the float plane still won. Speaking of float planes, how much fun did we have at Oshkosh at the seaplane base? Love the seaplane base. One of my favorite events there. Also there, though, was uh, Nick, our chapter president from Purdue. Let's hear what he has to say. Going to Oshkosh, you know, it's like going back to summer camp. You see all your friends from the year before, you meet new people, and you're able to gain those invaluable industry connections. We had a lot of great laughs. There was a really bad rainstorm. We all got time together, all cramped up in RVs and told a bunch of really fun stories. We got to watch the air shows together. You just hung out. He is so right. It felt exactly like summer camp. 
And you know that gay boys don't usually camp, so we were definitely in good hands with the lesbian and trans family helping us out. Come to think of it, on the way back, when we actually had a trailer breakdown, Chris Cree, our straight ally, came to save the day for us. Chris, you're awesome. You and the new ally membership are gonna take this organization to another level. You're right, Dean, they really are. I'm really excited to have more of our allies at our events this year. Jan, I know you attended our transgender social in Denver, Colorado last year. How was that? Jan. Jan. Oh, sorry guys. United Airlines and the Mile High Flyers chapter welcomed our transgender members to the event. It was also a great opportunity for our leadership and our members to be allies for the trans community. Yeah, I don't even think we finished bowling an entire game. We were that engaged in conversation and just building relationships with each other. Wow, we really have been super busy this year. So many events with eBase, OBAP, Cape Cod Classic, DC Pride, so Pride, many Pride, Life Cycle. Cities. Guys, Lots of stuff. we get it. But seriously though, we exhibit at least one event every month somewhere around the world. Great. It's crazy to think how much we really get done when everybody works together. But what else did we do this year, David? We gave away more scholarship money than any other year. How much did we give away, actually? Over 107,000. Wow. It's amazing to see where we started and where we are today. And Jen, not just cold hard cash, we gave away a Boeing 737 type rating thanks to Alaska Airlines, our first seaplane rating, and a tailwheel endorsement. And you know, our scholarships are becoming increasingly critical for our industry. I was talking to Rob Neighbor, one of our first members of NGPA, and he had some interesting things to say about that. Let's hear from Rob. The military historically has provided a huge percentage of the pilots that are occupying today's airline cockpits. In this particular day and age, however, that's less and less true than it used to be. And so more flying has to be done the old fashioned way by going to the local airfield and paying for an instructor. And that is a financial burden for anybody. One of our members, Eric Miner, just received uh, the instrument rating scholarship. And in the past, uh, a lot of our members have received generous NGPA scholarships. I specifically applied to the seaplane scholarship. I'm airport management, so I do not have to go any farther than private pilot in terms of flying. But flying is one of the most important things to me. And being a college student, I don't really ever have a ton of money to do fly. Having an opportunity to get my seaplane rating and get back in the air and improve my skills really means a lot to me. I love hearing from our members all around the world. Their stories and their voices, they give me so much hope. Right now we have over 2,200 members and over 5,000 constituents around the world representing NGPA. And over the past year, we've added a whole bunch of new local chapters. Let's hear from some of those people who felt motivated to start those chapters in their area. I wanted to launch a chapter at Purdue because I saw a need to improve the culture both within the aviation program and within the university as a whole. And even though we are struggling for members, we are here and we exist, and that's what's important right now. Last spring, we had a plane crash at our school, and there was a student on the flight. His name was Zach Capra. And I personally didn't know who he was, and they were saying, oh, he's an NGPA member. And so I wanted to bring a chapter on campus so that more people could join and be aware and then come together. I ran into some local Atlanta guys and I kept saying, you know, well, how come we don't have an Atlanta chapter anymore? And I said, you know what, I'm gonna do it. Having a local network is my favorite thing. I think that, and that was one of the biggest reasons why I restarted it. NGPA gives you the tools you need to start a chapter in the local city, and that's what's key. You need something to prime the pump. Being a local member is a huge benefit. You're actually meeting them in person and building a social relationship. Meeting locally on a regular basis, building relationships, networking, that's what NGPA is all about. So true, Troy. And how much do you love what Nick said? We are here and we exist. This is how we're gonna make meaningful change in our industry as a whole. It really is. Yes, and I think there's a common misconception of homophobia and transphobia going to get better because they're simply retiring from the industry here in the near future. And I don't think we can accept that as a community. Homophobia and transphobia exists in every generation. And that's clear to the incident that we had recently happen at our Embry-Riddle campus. Here's what Alyssa had to say about that event. To the students, the Spirit Rock is a source on campus that they can display their pride and any organization can paint it. So we went out that night and painted it and did the trans flag with Won't Be Erased. Early in the morning, we got a bunch of messages saying, 
that it was vandalized. Every time one of our LGBT-related organizations on the campus painted over it, it gets vandalized. As I talk to professors and staff around campus, and they always ask, oh, are there any issues? And I was like, this is a perfect example. I sent the email to the university, and then David and Troy called me. They really wanted to make sure that everyone at the Embry-Riddle campus knew that they weren't alone. I'm so proud of the student leadership at Embry-Riddle, not only for standing up for our NGPA members, but also for the LGBT student body on their campus. Absolutely. What's the progress we've made there, though? Well, at first, when we reached out, we got no response, unfortunately. But because of some of our members who are alumni from that university, it helped kind of push a response. And we now have scheduled training with faculty and students. But our work is definitely not done here. As a director of member services and support, I want everyone watching to know that we are here to advocate and to support them. We do more than just two large flagship events every year. There is so much more that we plan to do, that we can do, and we will do, like our inclusion training team. Continuing efforts with our women's committee. Expanding our reach globally. It's important for us to have this kind of support because we don't all have family support, so having each other is important. And the best part of being an NGPA member, in my opinion, are all the other fantastic members. Before a year ago, I had no idea that NGPA existed. Once we found it, I, I feel like there's a lot more resources that I have, a lot more people that I can go to. The connections that I've made are probably the most important connections professionally that I have made so far in my life. At the end of the day, I know that I can be myself around everyone in the NGPA. The NGPA is trying you know, on the behalf of its members to raise awareness of the issues that LGBT aviators face daily. It was really nice coming out my freshman year to have NGPA as a resource. That's something I'll always be grateful for. And if it weren't for the NGPA doing this, I think we would be much farther behind than we are now. And NGPA would not be here without all of you. Yes, thank you for being here tonight and opening up your hearts. Attending events like this, your membership, going to your local chapter events, this is what keeps us going. Ladies and gentlemen, we've turned the seatbelt sign on in preparation for our final descent into Palm Springs. We hope you've enjoyed your journey with us. Thanks for flying with NGPA.